ready for an action-packed half hour of positivity. Best way I can explain it is just nothing but out of control. We are revved up. <laughs> That's the feeling of what it feels like. Going around the country with one mission, spread some good news. It's kind of like doing a wheelie on a motorcycle, but all the time. Okay, we may be playing this up a little bit, but we are featuring some incredibly talented athletes today. Like this guy, Wisconsin monocycle rider Hunter Howe. I rode unicycles for 15 years professionally as a child in the circus. Um, and one day we were doing a show and we saw this crazy machine in Michigan. And I said, wow, I like one wheel machines and I really like this one. Since then, he's built a few of his own, including this 500 pound tractor wheel that goes upside down. Impressive and soon he hopes to set a new record. I told myself, if you see me going for this record, it's gonna be for one thing, one thing only. That is 100 miles per hour. You can do it, Hunter. You have good things still to come, and so do we. So let's roll. This is good to know. I adopted the slogan, don't give up, don't give up, don't ever give up show the world there are positive things and people out there doing things to help the community. And, and they really help keep us going and, and that's the reason we're here. Just come and expect to have fun and learn and uh, pass that on to other people. Just focus on the present. You focus on what you can be thankful for. It just lets the possibilities flow free. Hey everybody, welcome to Good to Know. I'm your host, Lindsay Boach, and today we're diving into the wide world of sports. And we're kicking it all off with a barefoot runner in Indiana. Shoes off and their minds set on turning heads. Running barefoot's a good attention getter. And when people ask why, it's a great you know, conversation starter. Jeremy Shupert isn't doing this barefoot run alone. He's got his friends running shoeless through Carmel and downtown Zionsville for the cause too. They're running to raise awareness for a rare disease his cousin was born with. Pearson syndrome, first off, is a kind of mitochondria depleting genetic disorder. Um, so it affects their blood and white blood cell count. Um, essentially, it affects their organs and the prognosis is not the best so possibly a short-lived life. Luca was born premature and not long after birth diagnosed with Pearson syndrome. Jeremy is running to raise money and awareness for treatment since right now there is no cure and the top expert for the disease is located in Israel. Little Luca is eight months old, cutest little big brown eyes, big cheeks, it's adorable. When I originally started my campaign to raise funds, my challenge was to run at least two miles barefoot every single day for 30 days straight. And I thought that that would be physically and mentally challenging for myself. On about day 20, I realized that it wasn't enough of a challenge to make myself uncomfortable. And so I decided to spice it up. So he decided to go a step further and up the ante to running 13.1 miles. It's challenging, and I think it makes people feel a little vulnerable to think that they can't do it. But the point was to prove that when the body is healthy and functioning, it's capable of amazing things. And it's those that are born without those healthy bodies that really need our attention and our help. Life just has a way of working out, and that's exactly what one fencer in Utah found out. Shelby Jensen was a healthy child, active even played sports. I had a stroke uh, 11 years ago. Until the age of seven, when a brain aneurysm showed up out of nowhere, changing everything. When they went in to do brain surgery, they clipped it off and it caused for my right side to be paralyzed. So I couldn't walk and talk and swallow. So I had to learn how to do everything again. Staring down a sudden handicap, life was hard, but sometimes it veers back in unforeseen directions presenting opportunities you never see coming. Through me for a loop. When did this unique competitive sport even become an option for you? I picked up Special Olympics just for rehab. Um, and then I got introduced to 
uh, wheelchair fencing back in uh, 2015. And though it took a couple trial runs, I was like, uh, Shelby and para fencing soon became a perfect match. I like the aspect that you can hit people and not get yelled at. And it took me a while to fully enjoy it and fully like, okay, this is my sport. She would soon find herself wearing primarily three colors, red, white, and blue, representing her country all over the world. This one right here was Montreal. With stamps to prove it, in just a few short years, Shelby and her swords would travel to nearly every continent, from Brazil to Japan, Dubai to Poland, South Korea to Hungary. She was doing something many kids could only dream, representing the United States of America. I think it's the best education because I was I was traveling while I was in high school. Not to mention winning with a score of medals to prove it. These two came from uh, the Pan Am Championships. This now 19-year-old was supposed to be preparing for the upcoming Paralympics in Tokyo before the virus postponed the 2020 Summer Games by a full year. Just like a couple weeks ago, I got the notice that like they've reopened qualification, they've added a couple more competitions and I'm like, okay, time for me to show what I've learned during this time I've been indoors. Training in three different events, five days a week, Shelby hopes to compete in the next three Paralympics, all the while having no idea that a tragedy as a child would present her with a chance to not only find it, but become great at it. I eat, sleep, and breathe fencing. Fans have been here pretty much all along. This is my summer. Just not for baseball. We spent a lot of time thinking about how can we still be viable. Since the pandemic suspended the baseball season, the Florence Yalls were forced to get creative. We were all flabbergasted. Well, what, what in the world are we going to do? How are we going to continue to be a viable entity if we can't play baseball? So first they put together an animal farm. Then they turned their stadium into a bar and grill. <laughs> But these fans will soon get what they really want. We can't wait for the players to come back. We can't wait for the fans to come back. The team got confirmation recently from Kentucky leaders that they can have baseball and they can also have fans there. We were elated. They're allowed to have up to 50% capacity of fans. But how do you make that happen? So that's a small nightmare. We're still trying to work through the process. But quite honestly, I don't even think we're going to get to 50% capacity. We're going to ensure that everyone's seating is socially distanced properly. The next challenge, who do they play against? The independent league they play in canceled the season, so it was time to get creative yet again. We've gotten together with Lexington, the Lexington Legends, just down the road, and we're going to play a Battle of the Bourbon Trail 2020 series. Four teams total. Lexington splits up into two different teams and so does Florence. They're going to be on the same organization, which is ours. However, they're going to compete against each other, just like you would at any other team. It just happened to be situated in the same city. We have so much more to share, including a powerful story from one of the strongest women on earth. You know, I was really worried that no one would ever love me. And um, I never want other people to have to feel that way. It's good to know.